an easy and stress-free way to feed your family in an emergency. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be making some emergency meal kits. The purpose of these kits is to give you one less thing to worry about in the event of an emergency. You may be without power, you may be without running water, things may be chaotic, hectic, and stressful, but your family still needs to eat. So all you need to do is grab one of these kits off the shelf and you have everything you need right there to make and serve a complete meal to your family. There's a few criteria that I take into consideration when I create meals like this. Number one, it should be a complete meal, meaning it contains your protein, your starch, and your fruit and or vegetable. Number two, it should be a meal that requires no additional water to prepare. Your water may be at a premium and we wanna conserve all that we can. So nothing that needs to be boiled, nothing that needs water added, any of that. Another criteria, and for me this is the most difficult, is that this should be a meal that does not need to be cooked and doesn't even need to be heated. Something that you can eat cold. A few of these things may be better if they were heated, but they're certainly edible if they're eaten cold. And the last criteria is that everything you include in these kits should have a shelf life of at least six months. I like to rotate out certain things for my preps every six months or so. I usually use September, National Preparedness Month, and March for spring cleaning as my mental cues. So keep an eye on everything that you include in your kit and make sure it has a shelf life of at least six months. I'm gonna show you what I came up with for meal ideas and I would love to hear down in the comments any ideas that you have. You guys have the most wonderful ideas and it was really difficult to come up with meals that fit all those criteria. So let me know what you got. Now I did get these two and two and a half gallon Ziploc bags to contain my meal kits in. I like the Ziploc bags because they're flexible. I can stuff a lot of stuff in them. I can put them inside of a plastic tote box if I want or just set them straight on my shelf. And I really like that they can be used to contain the garbage when the meal is over. You can take everything that you used, all the containers, all the plates, everything, put them right into the bag, zip it up, and it'll help contain the mess and help contain the smell. Because if you're in an emergency situation, your trash pickup might not be what it usually is. So the first meal idea that I came up with was kind of a burrito taco boat kind of meal. I got these old El Paso soft taco boats. They have large ones and they have mini ones. And these do have a shelf life on them of about, it was about nine months from the time that I bought them. So they fit into our criteria of a six month shelf life. They will be good until the six months up and then I can rotate them out into our regular meal stock. I got these packets of cilantro lime rice, ready rice. This rice is already cooked. You would typically microwave it, but you could also heat it in a pot of boiling water, but you can also eat it cold because it is completely cooked and soft. So I'm adding a couple of those. You could also use um, Spanish rice in a can. I got this at our Save-A-Lot. I don't know how many of you have Save-A-Lot out there. I don't know how widespread that store is, but I don't know. Let me know if you've seen Spanish rice in a can because that's the only store that I've ever found it in around here is Save-A-Lot. So you have some rice and then I've got the taco complete. I showed this in one of my hauls before. This is a taco meat filling. That's, it's got some vegetables inside of it, so this is going to be our vegetable. Also for this meal, we're kind of cheating a little bit. It's taco meat with corn, red peppers, and black beans. I'm going to include two cans of these. And I found these I get at Dollar Tree, these little Velveeta cheese sauce packets. These are pretty shelf stable for longer than six months, so these would be great to include for a shelf stable cheese option. And then I did get this little mini bottle of Pace Salsa is from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is great for getting small packaging if you need them for something like this. This is a smaller bottle than we would typically buy, but it'll be perfect for this use because we want to use it all up and not have any that needs to be refrigerated. Now there's a couple of changes, a couple of things that I'm going to include in mine that you wouldn't have to include in yours just because I know my kids, I know my family, I know what they like. My kids are in love with sour cream and shredded cheese. Now, that's pretty hard to get shelf stable, but you might have seen me talk about the media crema before. This is basically like a light cream or heavy cream in a can, and you can use this to make sour cream. You just stir in um, one to two teaspoons of vinegar into this and let it set until it thickens up. So I got these little vials. These are kind of um, 
they have a screw on lid. You can see there's a little bit of a gasket in there that makes it watertight. And I was just going to include, these are about two milliliters. They hold almost exactly two teaspoons. So I'm just gonna fill this up with some white vinegar. Oops, that was a little much. And put the lid on. And I'm gonna include this in the kit with the media crema. Now the other thing that I want to include, because I know my kids really like it, is some shredded cheese. Now, I'm gonna use my freeze-dried shredded cheese. Now that could be breaking the rules a little bit because theoretically this should actually be refreshed with a tiny bit of water, just a couple of tablespoons. But um, number one, it's perfectly good to eat dry and crunchy. It does not need to be refreshed. I think it would be really good on these burrito boats. And the other thing is there's plenty of moisture in some of the ingredients in the salsa, in the taco meat filling, that I think it will refresh the cheese on its own without adding any water. So I've got these Mylar bags and I'm just gonna put some cheese in. And typically if I was storing this for a long term, I would um, use some oxygen absorbers. But this freeze dried cheddar cheese is shelf stable for a year, at least a year after it's opened out of the can. So it's gonna be fine in this bag without oxygen absorbers for six months before I rotate it out. So these bags actually have a Ziploc on them so I don't even have to heat seal them. I can just zip that right up and include that in my meal kit. Now we'll get these all put into the bag starting with the taco boats. and the taco meat, the rice, got the media crema, and the vinegar to turn that into sour cream, got our salsa, we've got our Velveeta cheese packet, and also our freeze-dried shredded cheddar and we've got our Spanish rice now it's important to know if you have items like these that don't have a pop top if you have any cans that need opening you're going to want to include a can opener just in case you don't have access to a can opener you can use a cheap Dollar Tree or Walmart can opener if you want it doesn't have to be long-lasting you can also use some of these military, these very small military style can openers. You can get these, these come in sets. They're very inexpensive and so they're great to stick just about anywhere. They look like this. And these would be great to include because you can probably use the can opener in your house. This is just an ad, added backup if for some reason you don't have access to a can opener. So I'm going to include one of these can openers. And you also want to include forks and napkins, and of course some paper plates. Zip. Done. So the next meal is a pretty simple one. I got pouches of tuna and chicken. I got the pouches because they're easy open. They don't need a can opener. These are large, the large sort of family size pouches. I got chicken and tuna because not everyone in my family likes one or the other. We have some who like tuna, some who like chicken, so this will make everyone happy. Another good thing about these pouches is that you can actually mix them up right in the pouch with the mayonnaise and serve it right out of the pouch and not have an extra bowl. I did get a small thing of mayonnaise. This once again is from Dollar Tree. Just make sure that the expiration is six months out. This way it's just about as much as you need. You won't have a lot of waste. You might also have, if you have packets of condiments from takeout food or fast food restaurants that you save your extra packets you might have enough mayonnaise packets that you can just include mayonnaise packets depending on how many people you're serving with your kit i'm putting in some crackers these are like the walmart brand of triscuits these are a good hearty cracker to hold the tuna salad the chicken salad and to be kind of like a real hearty meal for people and then for our fruit or vegetable 
I am including a can of pineapple. Once again, this has a pop top, so no can openers needed for this kit. Put this one into the bag. Crackers. Fruit. Mayonnaise. Our pouches of tuna and chicken. And for this one, I've got napkins and spoons, spoons to mix up and serve the tuna and chicken salad with, and for people to eat their fruit. And this one doesn't need any really heavy duty paper plates, but we've got some paper plates to go right inside. Zip, done. For my next emergency meal, I put together a main dish pasta salad. We like to eat a lot of main dish pasta salads in the summer because it contains everything you need in one dish. You've got your starch with your pasta, you've got your protein with some sort of meat, and then we usually throw in a vegetable. So it's a complete meal. So for this one, I got these uh, ready pasta pouches. This is completely cooked pasta. Once again, you would typically microwave this, but they're completely cooked and ready to eat. For the protein, I got, I'm going to use this, um, it's basically Walmart's version of Spam. I was going to use a, this canned ham, this small, cheap canned ham, but this is pretty big compared to this, and I think this would be overkill. I think this would be too much meat. So I'm going to use this and dice it up just like ham. And then for the veggie, I've got some peas. When we make this salad, you know, with fresh ingredients, we would usually use frozen peas. And... The canned peas are going to be a bit mushier. Freeze-dried peas would be a better choice, but once again, they would need water to be refreshed. So we're going to go with the canned peas. And then for the dressing, I've got, once again, a mini size bottle of ranch dressing that came from Dollar Tree and the mini mayonnaise that also came from Dollar Tree. You can use half and half up to all ranch, whatever you like, whatever your family's preference is. We'll get this all put into the bag. We've got our pasta veggie, meat, and our dressing ingredients. And once again, we've got napkins and forks, can opener for the peas, and some paper plates. Done. So for my next meal idea, I'm going to do walking tacos. We do these all the time when we go camping. We love them. Now walking tacos, if you've never heard of it, it's basically like a taco salad in a bag of chips. So what you do is you take a bag of Fritos or you can also use Doritos and you basically open the bag on the top and then crush up the chips. You want to open the bag first because if you don't, when you start crushing, sometimes the bottom will blow out of the bag and you'll lose your chips right on the ground. Ask me how I know. So when we go camping, we usually bring taco meat and heat that over the camps over the campfire, but I've also done it with chili before. In fact, when I first heard about this recipe years ago, I found it in a Taste of Home magazine, Campfire Tacos, I think they called it, and it used canned chili. And that was very good. We just, over the years, changed to using taco meat, but for this purpose, we're gonna use the canned chili. So you put this in with your crushed chips, and then you put in your taco toppings. So we've got salsa. I've got the Velveeta cheese sauce again, but once again, I'm also going to do the media crema and vinegar so that we can have sour cream. And I'm also gonna do the little Mylar bag of shredded freeze-dried cheddar cheese because my kids would like that. And then for the fruit or veggie, we're gonna have some canned pears. because that's. And now this is a really good one because all my cans are pop tops. The pears, the chili, the media crema, everything is a pop top, so I don't need any can openers with this, so this is ideal. So once again, we're going to put everything into the bag. We've got chili. We've got our fruit. The media crema. And our salsa. And the vinegar to make sour cream. We've got our freeze-dried shredded cheddar. And as many bags of Fritos and Doritos as you think your family will eat. 
and the Velveeta cheese sauce. Forgot about that one. Now the great thing about walking tacos is that they really don't make any dishes. You're eating it right out of the chip bag and then you just throw that away when you're done. But you are going to need forks to eat it with and napkins. Now some people, like especially bigger men with bigger appetites, might prefer to eat it out of a bowl because they can dump several bags and all the ingredients in at once rather than eating it one at a time out of the bag. So that's up to you, but you'll definitely want something to eat the fruit off of. So I'm putting in some paper plates. Zip. Done. So the last emergency meal I put together today is Chinese food. Now this was the biggest stretch for me in terms of being able to eat it cold. But I thought, well, I'm sure I've opened up the leftover Chinese food in the morning and eaten it cold out of the carton. So we're going to go with it. But if you could warm this up, it would probably be better. Now you can warm your food. You know, you really should be prepping not just food, but ways to cook your food without power. And I'm going to have a whole nother video coming up on that. But even if you don't have anything in your home, almost everyone has candles. You might have rubbing alcohol and some aluminum cans. There's lots of different ways that you can put together something to heat your food. You can even heat it right in the can if you need to. So what I got was these um, Le Choy chicken chow mein. These are pretty tasty. They've got the chicken and sauce in the top and the Asian style vegetables in the bottom. I'm doing two cans for our family. I like to add extra chicken when we make these because they're kind of light on the chicken, light on the beef if you do the beef one. So add extra chicken to that. I got a couple pouches of um, pre-cooked rice, already cooked rice, that so this can be served over to stretch and make it go further. I'm also including a bag of these chow mein noodles, which you can sprinkle over the top, put underneath whatever you want. And then for the fruit or vegetable, I'm doing mandarin oranges. Now none of these cans have the pop top, so we're going to have to put in a can opener. These are big cans, so I'll probably use this type of can opener. So let's put this meal all in the bag. Our chow mein. Mandarin oranges. That's a tight squeeze. The extra chicken. packets of rice and we will throw the noodles right on top. Now definitely going to want forks and napkins for this one. Paper plates and our can opener. Done. So guys, that was pretty easy to put together and now we have five complete meals ready to go in case of an emergency. Now for a shorter term emergency, you can have enough of these meals to get you through the whole time if it's only a few days. And for a longer term emergency, these can be really important to get you through those hectic first days when there might be a lot of cleanup going on, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos. This can be an easy way to get you through those days until you get yourself settled and get your long-term plan of action going. Now I'm going to stash these meals right in my pantry and they're going to be ready to go. Now like I said, I will rotate these out every six months. Now you can either just take out the ingredients and rotate them into your regular pantry or you can actually take the whole meals and just put them in your pantry and use them as, you know, dinner emergency kind of meals. You know those nights when you get running late or things don't go as planned and you just don't have a dinner planned instead of going for a drive through or take out or whatever, you can actually pull one of those together. It can be really good if you're going to be gone and you have teenage children, older children, you can just hand them a bag and say, here's your dinner. Just open it up, warm it up if necessary. So you can do that. You can keep the whole meal kits right together and rotate them into your regular use pantry, or you can take the ingredients out and use them separately, whatever you want to do. But having some emergency meal kits prepared can really help you out when times get tough. You could even grab one or two of these if you had to evacuate and take them with you. Thanks for watching. I hope I've given you some good ideas and now I'd love to hear your ideas down in the comments. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future uploads. 
I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.